Hello and welcome to Perspectives, where we'll take a deep dive into the issues of the day and where we'll take a look at people's opinion on such issues. I am Ruth Osime. Welcome back to Perspectives here on Arise News. This, year, in, this year's International Women's Day theme is Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress, with a focus on addressing economic disempowerment while the campaign theme is Inspire Inclusion. This is profound as we continue to celebrate the month because to date, women still face inequalities with cultural and societal expectations. Regardless of this though, women have attained immense success in every field but are yet to make enough breakthroughs in sectors like politics in Nigeria, where are yet to have a female president. Today we will showcase an activist whose achievements were exceptional, multifaceted, and far-reaching. She's recognized as the first female Nigerian political activist who led the advocate of women's rights in her country during the first half of the 20th century. She was, in many ways, the mother of the nation. We'll also talk about a fashion icon who, before she passed away recently at the age of 102, became a world-renowned model at age 97. Known for her flamboyant style, outspoken personality, and oversized eyeglasses, she dared to be different in an industry where ageism still reigns supreme. And last but not least, we take a stroll down memory lane and showcase some remarkable women who have made significant contributions to Nigeria's history. In their time, the culture of patriarchy and male chauvinism undermined their rights, leaving them in servitude to the men. Even though the power they wielded as they protected against unjust laws was considered a nuisance by colonial officers at the time, their accomplishments serve as a reminder of the important roles women have played in shaping the nation. Their legacies have also inspired future generations of Nigerian women to continue to advocate for social change. We're heading for a short break, but stay with us because we will be back to focus on Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, a work of art that captures the life and times of an Amazon, as well as the two charismatic women who interpreted so well the role she played in the evolution of Nigeria. Welcome back to Perspectives here on Arise News. Fumilara Ransom Kuti was a Nigerian activist, feminist, and the first woman in Abelkota to ever drive a car. During the 1940s, Ransom Kuti established Abelkota Women's Union and advocated for women's rights, demanding better representation of women in local governing bodies and an end to unfair taxes on market women. Described by the media as a lioness of Lishabi, she led matches and protests of up to 10,000 women, forcing the ruling Alake to temporarily abdicate in 1949. Now in the movie depicting the life and times of Fumla Rasson Kuti, two charismatic Nigerian women spread nothing, spread nothing in their interpretive, interpretative activities, abilities. First off, we have Kende Bankole, who is not just an actress, but also a model and a television host. Kende made her entertainment debut in Miss Commonwealth Nigeria in, 19, in 2003, then proceeded with M Most Beautiful Girl in Nigeria 2004. She has garnered numerous international, international awards through her illustrious career. Her greatest feat to date is acting in the never before told story of Fumilaya Ransom Kuti made by film director Bolanli Austin Peters, where she plays the younger version of the character. One of the biggest honors of a young Nigerian actress is to fill the large shoes of the unbeatable Fumilaya Ransom Kuti and Kende sure fits the bill. Next up is award-winning veteran actress, producer, director, and acting coach, Joker Jacobs. Since 1981, Joker has worked on the platform of theater, film, television, and radio. She has featured, featured in many award-winning films and has won several awards, including five movie Academy Awards, Solidra Award for Performing Arts, Best of Africa Award from Alexander Forbes, she is known for using all forms of creative media as a tool to support her convictions on women empowerment and human rights. The veteran actress recently played the older role of Nigerian female activist Dr. Fumlayo Ransom Kuti in Bolani Austin Peters' movie 
and a directed top biopic by her. Great to have both of you here on um, Arise TV. Thank you so much. You know, I watched <coughs> this movie and I was totally transfixed. You know, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get over how well played it was. And I found that it was so impactful, especially in today's times. And I think it was also an appropriate movie to launch at this trying time because this is International Women's Month, as, mm. you, as you well know. So I think that to a certain extent, it, it sent a very strong message across. Mm. Now, we're going to talk about the movie, but I'm going to also try and relate most of the things that happened to the movie as a lesson for today's times. So let's start with you, um, Joke. Okay. I know you have had a thousand and one, you've played a thousand and one roles. In fact, you are, you are Meryl Streep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nigeria, Mary Street. Thank you. you know? So each movie must have had some impact on you. How profound was this one, playing the role of an older FRK? Hmm. Um, it, 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 playing FRK, first of all, um, was very intimidating hmm. initially because, you know, she's someone that you, you've, you've read about and, and all that, and even, you know, um, even if you haven't read about her, just playing the role, you now you now have to research about mm -hmm. her, and you know seeing all her accomplishments and and all, you know. But then you then look at the craft, so that's where I'm going to go with this question: the craft of performance itself, and the part of Fumilayo Ransom Kuti that I was playing, and you know then looking at. You, what would be the best way for the audience to be able mm -hmm. to understand this particular stage of her life? And you could you could easily play her very ill and have the illness mm. coming through the voice. But the but the part of the film, that, uh, the major part of the film is going to be about this, and she's the storyteller. And the major part of the film is about how you know she she the does the, um, the mm -hmm. activism and all that. Mm. So you. You can show a bit of the illness. Let the let the set and everything do the illness, but let the voice show yes, the because, strength. Yes, because yes. there was an yes. inner strength in yeah, your character. Exactly. You, yes. you know, even though you were fragile in yes. the physical, yes. you were strong, you were strong and yes. determined so, in the spirit, and that yes. came across. Yes. In your in your yes. role. Yes. Okay, Kendi, I want to ask you. You know, there was a part where she said, "We won, but I lost," and she was talking about the loss of her husband. And as you know, in the movie, her husband was very supportive. Very. And then, you know, even though she was a very strong-willed woman, but in, in, you find that in such cases, not all of them have, such women have strong spousal support, you know. So if I, knowing the role that you played, knowing, knowing how, you, how well you played that role, what have you learned from it? What do you think a woman should do if she has a spouse who is not as supportive as her call or her vision or her drive? How does she find a balance between maintaining her home and still pursuing her course? Wow, that's a very heavy question to answer <laughs> because there are layers to this matter. Yes. Mm. Sometimes we find women are already in relationships or in marriages already mm -hmm. before they discovered themselves or their strengths mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. pursue their career, mm. only to turn around and see that the man is not supporting enough. Mm. They're already in it. Now, the struggle will be failing in that marriage is going to be a lot more louder now that she's successful. Mm -hmm. They would never think, oh, the marriage failed. They would think her career or her success is in the way mm -hmm. of allowing the marriage to flourish. Mm -hmm. So for someone like that, it's, that would be an area I, I may not be able to answer to. If you're already in it, only to discover that the person is not supportive. I wouldn't want to express any very strong thoughts on that matter. Mm. But on the matter of the ones who are still lucky that you haven't picked, you haven't chosen, you're still, you know, still surfing around, mm. I'll just say choose somebody who already is not afraid of you, is not worried, wants you to thrive, and he sees your success as mm -hmm. his own reflection. He wants mm -hmm. you to do well. Choose such a person. In, in conclusion, if a woman finds herself in that kind of situation, I think she'll just have to make the most of it mm. make the most of it make sacrifices maybe yeah. lose a couple of things to be able to gain here and there mm. you know but that makes I, sense very hard mm. now joke mm, yes there was a scene where frk took the women to the palace to mm. go and fight blah 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 and unfortunately you know they were manhandled they were beaten and what have you but she came back stronger you know she built a union that fought the king to a standstill 
What can women do today to foster mm. that kind of unity, to build a voice that is so strong, mm. especially in politics, that you, we can, a voice that is women that will support a woman strong, strongly enough for her to become governor, for mm. instance. Mm. What do you think we need to do to fight against these stereotypes and give our voice more, voices more strength as women? I think part of the, um, um, I'm hoping that part of what FRK does for the society at large and especially for women is to let us understand what the women who have gone before us have mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. you know we have frk but she really wasn't the only one you have alimo to oh, wura frk yes, was oh, in Ugo. yes alimo to was, was, was in lagos mm -hmm. you had um Margaret Eko. Uh, Margaret Eko, exactly yes. so we had women all over the place and then even in the recent part we we had sawo uh, uh, um gambana um, Gabas, uh, uh, oh God, I, 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 you know, she was from the north. These were women who were politically savvy. And what they did, as we'll learn from the story of FRK, is that they understood the terrain. They mm. understood where the women were, but they understood that it was in togetherness that they would achieve anything. Yeah. Now, if we look at all the other professions, whether it's in acting, whether it's in um, medicine, whether it's in law, there has been a natural progression in which our women have done exceptional things. We start from the lone person, and then it has sprung up to the point where we have thousands all over the place. Mm. But in politics, we don't yeah, have the same that's, thing. That's, 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 what happened? That's one field. You know, that's one area. We have, we are still we, not we've had those women. So I believe that what it is is that for today's politician, First of, us, let, first of all, let us know that you are there. Mm. And then you will see people who will galvanize. And rally around and you. Rally around you because that's what she did. She, first of all, she, she looked at the, you know, there were the educated women and there were mm -hmm. the non-educated women yes. who were, they were not formally educated. Mm -hmm. But I don't like to use the word illiterate. Mm -hmm. They were savvy in business. They were entrepreneurs and things like that. But, the, you know, so she bridged the gap, gap yes. between the two and brought them together so that they all spoke with one voice. And, I'm, and what, I'm, what I feel that I, and what I hope that... Um, that FRK will do for the female politician of today is to say to you, here, this is what I want to do. This is what I think we can do to make things better for us as So you don't as, think as they're doing enough of that? Female I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we have some exceptionally um, savvy politicians People like Mrs. Tunumbu, for instance, she's mm. incredible because she's been in a um, uh, in a in Senate in the Senate. Yeah. You know, she's been she's been part of the um, wife of the governor and then now wife of the president. Yes. Incredible platform. You have people like uh, Bisi Fayemi. You mm. have you know you you have this um, Obiyaz and yes, 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 do, yes. do you understand? But. The, but the, she ran. It, it, it can't be. It, she ran. Yes, but for uh, for uh, yes, she ran. But I, I think that she ran at so late a time. But and I think the running was to just understand how the okay. how, how the runs of things. Yes, how it runs. So I, I just feel that maybe there's there is a place for the coming together of these incredible women to just push. Yes, and one have forward. one strong lone voice. One, one strong, for now. Okay. And then it's going to, I, I think the, the numbers will begin to multiply. Well, that That's what I think. Now that you speak of women, I also want to talk about motherhood. Yes. The power of motherhood. Mm. You remember in this, there was a scene where, whilst the women were protesting, the Oros, I don't know what, is it? Oro. 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 Yeah. Yes. Came out and women were not supposed to see them. And it was yes. like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. But they did something that was so profound. Yes. So tell us, for instance, what they did to those who haven't seen it yet, and why you think that has made such an impact. What did that act itself portray to you? Well, as the a woman? act that the women did, the older uh, women did, was to bear their chest to mm -hmm. the men, yes. bear their breasts. Mothers are the earth itself. We are the center of everything. Without us, your existence as men. Even your survival, everything is right here in the palms of a woman's hands. So because women, women nurture, nourish, and allow, because of submissiveness, maybe from a wife to 
the husband does not mean that the power or our capabilities are reduced in any way. Mm. We're still as strong and as powerful, but we allow because we've, we found a place where we lead without being in the front. Mm. But that's not to say you, mm. you will forget that we like lead. That. Yeah. We do I lead. Like so I think mm. the mothers had to do that to let the men know that. Even before you became, we were. Mm. Without yes. us, yes. you cannot be. I so as soon as the women did that mm. to the men, all the, all the we're doing, they, they, they understood and they stayed. <laughs> yes. And they calmed down. down. Yes. They, they were coming down. down. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's, it's good that you mentioned that. Because, yes. you know, also, even though women are like the bane of the earth, but they're the ones who bring forth these children, there are also challenges that women face mm. when it comes to womanhood. And remember where there was a scene where she said, even an elephant cannot stop a determined lioness. Mm. So you find that despite the importance of women in society, you know, we still face numerous challenges as women. Do you understand? Mm. So can you share some of these very obvious challenges that, mm. women, 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 that are challenging to women today? Mm. I think part of it sometimes is that, you know, um, you've probably gotten your career down pat, everything is working well, and uh, okay, maybe a married woman or a, uh, a woman with a, uh, um, a, a young family or something, the, 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 the child falls ill or something happens to the child, how does that affect your career, mm. you know, um, things that uh, people would understand if it was a guy. If it was a man, but you know, a woman taking time off work to do the, you know, the yeah, 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 uh, yeah. yes, you yeah, know. Those, those so, so, so there are those kind of challenges, and then there, there, there are times when because of work you spend, you need to spend hours at work, mm. you know. Um, and I think I remember a very good friend of mine. I will mention her name here. She was a banker, and you know, the banking industry just demands so much of your time. And she looked at it and said, I have a young family. Um, you know, I, I have a home that I'm trying to, to grow. Yeah. And she just said to herself, seven o'clock, I'm out of here. I've done all the work that I need to do. Seven o'clock, I'm out. And, and that was it. And she stuck to it. And it didn't stop her from rising. Do you mm -hmm. understand? So I think that that's, that's also part of what women will need to do mm -hmm. in the workplace. Look for strategies that will help them to have what they want. Balance and find a balancing yes, act. Also. Balance, because yes. you also have situations where sometimes, even if the man is not complaining, the family mm. might complain. The family, mm. family is complaining. Home. She's yes, so hard driven. Yes, so. She's never at home. Or mother in law. Blah, blah, blah. Mother in law. Yes. Whatever. And yes. then you also even have instances where there's also spousal abuse. You know, when you get beaten and. Spousal you know, abuse. Yes. The answer to spousal abuse get out. Leave. Well, it, it, no, it, no, no, no. For yeah, me, it, it, you need it, to I wish leave. It was that straightforward. You know, it's, it, I think people don't realize, at, well, if you're in Lagos, for instance, there's a law in Lagos that when you are being abused by your spouse, this abusive spouse must leave the house. And, mm. go, you know, so the thing is this. It's not saying break the marriage. No. It is saying separate. So that you don't, one person doesn't end up murdering the other. Which has, which has happened. Exactly. Which has happened. It, it's for your this own is safety. Of, this is a part of the challenges yes. that you face so as, let's, as a woman. You, you know, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that it is the end of your marriage. No, it doesn't have to. It just needs that there needs to be a separation where the both of you probably need to get some yeah, counseling. Sure, you'll be shocked sure how many women, educated, mm. hardworking, mm. intelligent women, how mm. many of them are victims to things like this, I, I know, you know, and I know. It's, it's still boils down to brawn than brain, brain, yes. physical strength, you mm, know, which mm. brings me to my next question with you, Kendi, it's about chauvinism. Do you still think that women are unfairly judged today? Because a woman like um, FRK in the movie, for instance, was talked down at by the king. I remember there was a part where she said, oh, when I first came to see, how do you say it in Yoruba? You said well, when I came uh, to see you, you didn't stand, uh, and now you are standing up uh, or something. Now, uh, uh, what did they for me sing? Uh, no, so, yeah. she, she said initially she said I joke, but I'm aware. I'm not saying I'm going to be in sorrow. Eh, she said she's going to be in your sorrow. I'm only saying I worry me. Eh, no, it's what did they for me? Okay, translate even, that in even English. Even rose in anger. Yes, translate that in English for those who don't speak English. So she had come into the palace to try and address some issues and to get the king's attention, mm. and uh, he didn't pay attention to her. But by the time she shook things up a little, he then, you know, in anger, of course, mm -hmm. rose. But she still made him rise. So do you still think this chauvinism, chauvinism is still embedded in our, in our psyche, especially as Africans? Certainly it is. You know, what instances can you give, for instance, that you think is chauvinistic? 
with our man, with Nigerian men or African men? <laughs> the very first easiest thing to go to, domestic chores. Mm. You live in a house with a woman, you, <laughs> it's a domestic environment. Need, things will not do themselves. My, like my mom would say, oh, well, loan mm. konshi. You can't say, oh, they would rather say, oh, why is that there? Why are you asking why it's there? Could you not help? Take it away mm. from there. We live here together. So domestic chores in many homes, still a challenge. They want the woman to raise the kids, run the house, be available when it comes to sexual matters, still be available to the family, still do the... They want you to do everything. And yet, mm. if they know I'm that strong as a woman, then accord me the respect that comes with that strength. Yeah. You don't just expect. So I think that is a very good example, plus so many numerous ones. Careers. People, mm. I see women who struggle with getting promotions. Sometimes a woman has to even work twice as hard. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. And yes, they understand impact. that she's, she still has to run the home, yet they won't cut her any slack. They expect her to deliver. But when it's time for them to give her a raise, maybe a promotion, mm. they forget how strong she is. Yeah, just time. like the yes. women that were made to pay taxes. Yeah, exactly. In, in, you know? in, in, the, in the movie, for yes. being whatever. But you know, now that we've spoken about this, and we've spoken about balancing acts and what have you, mm. I'm sure over time you guys must have had your role models. Who do you, who is your role model? Who inspired you to be the woman that you are today? I think the first one would be my mom. Okay. Yeah, because she was one of the earliest um, female medical doctors in, in Nigeria. And she always, she, she always had her career till she retired. And, um, but she always ran her home as well. And she ran it very successfully. That's good. You know, and um, so with, you, you know, and running all that, that entails, the extended family and things like, you know, having her there as a role model was, was in incredible. Now, what, I just want to go back to something that you said in the last question, which is that the, the men that we have are the men that we have raised. You know, mm. as, as women. And yes. that thing that you said about the chores is that it is important, even if you were not, it is important that women raise their children to do things. So I'm not saying raise the girl to, you know, what the boy does, make sure the girl does it. What the, what, what the girl, girl does, does, make sure the, the boy, boy does it. it. Yes. Because you don't know what life is going to throw at them. You know, your, your, your son may not find a spouse for years. He must be able to cook for himself and keep his place surroundings clean. Mm. And then the woman, she may not get married for, for a while. So, of, dear, be able to um, fund for your fend for yourself and still be able to change a tire just in case, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just in case nobody stops to help you yeah. change a tire, you know, things like that. I, I, I think you know, um, that's, that's very important. But do you so think, my mom Yeah, but do you think women mom. also sometimes play this in, um, role in making the boys, I, I, I'm glad you said that mm. women should train their boys and girls the same way and let everybody yes. know that you can do things equally. Yes. But there are some women or society that encourages boys to be boys. In other words, go and play your football or uh, make sure you're a man. Thank God there's female football now. No, but no, no, they tell you things like, oh, make sure you don't cry, you're a man. You yeah, look, so very wrong. There are some undercurrents, Current, there are yes. some under, underlining societal messages yes. that society, society puts on, on, the, on, men, on men on men and and i think that's one of the things that is that is so important and we get in your in the character of the husband you know mm. because he was so secure yeah in himself who he yeah. was Larry. that yeah. yes he yeah. was so secure Not a lot of that, men are like yeah, that. exactly that he could push her and you know when things were tough for him you know he, he tried to hide it away from yes. her, but she could, yes. you know, not there to were burden her Yes, not to burden her with it. Yes, yes. yes. But, but the thing is that it is important to allow men, men are, they're human beings. Mm. So if they cry, they cry. Yes. Allow, yes. allow people to cry. I think there's cry. even strength in crying. In crying, in there yourself. is, there is. And there's nothing wrong, there's nothing to be ashamed, you know, because sometimes okay. when, that, uh, when that emotion is pent up, is not being allowed to be released, it then releases itself okay. in yeah. anger. We're going on a break yeah. now, so don't, don't mm. go anywhere soon. Okay. <laughs> We're going on a break now, we'll see you right back on Perspectives. Don't go anywhere. See you soon. So... Joker, let's start with you again. Okay. 
<laughs> you know, we were talking about, it was a name you were trying to remember in the first scene. Yes, uh, Sambuk uh, Gambo Sawaba. Exactly. That's it. So Gambo tell, tell Sawaba. us about her. Yes, she was a, she was a, politi a female politician in the, in the North, and she was very, she was very um, concerned, especially about the masses. She wasn't so much about the elites, but about mm -hmm. the masses, and she suffered for her for her uh, pol politics, but she, mm. but, but she did incredible work, work in mm. the North and around Nigeria, in fact, yes. Mm. Yeah. You know, now that you're saying that, you know, like I was saying, we were saying, Kende, mm. you know, is that other countries have female presidents. Mm. And, and I'm still quite aghast that we haven't been able to even get a governor talk, talk less of a president. I mean, if you look at Ethiopia uh, now, I mm -hmm. think has a female president. I think Tanzania too, the same thing. Oh, wow. So I when are we going to get to that stage? I'm not sure about Tanzania, but I know mm -hmm. Ethiopia for mm -hmm. sure. I, I mean, we are one was in, was it Liberia? Yes, we yes, have Liberia. Uh, yes, uh, and we're supposed yes. to be the giant of Africa. So why don't we have one? What do you think are the main challenges that we're facing as women for us not to be able to achieve this feat? I think we as women are very competitive. And we're not using that strength to our advantage, especially seeing as it's a little bit tough for us to get the kind of positions we're looking for. Mm. If we're competitive, why don't we not use it against one another? Sometimes I've seen women are the, the worst critics of one another. Mm. They, we say women supporting women. Yes, we do say that. But the competitive side of us would not let things be easy. Uh, as Auntie Joken mentioned earlier when we were speaking about from Lauren Branson Kuti, she said... Let the women who are interested in politics now open up that channel. Let them communicate more. Mm -hmm. Let them say, this is what I want. As a big leader, you have to, first of all, also be a very good follower. Yeah. Let them also support other women, regardless of your status or your position, which was something we also saw in the film from Lyra and Kuti, yes. where there was segregation between the women yes. who were not learned yes. and the ones who were learned. Yes. And that's not to say the ones that were not educated were not intelligent or yes. bright or yes. they were just different mm -hmm. so you have a political ambition you have a position currently you're powerful you're more learned or more educated than others you need the following mm. so therefore you have to also serve mm -hmm. in whatever capacity before mm. people now rally around you so they need to 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 advocate more say what you want to do and if you look back you find women well as long as you position yourself as if oh it's a competition mm. they will they don't care what you have they will not support you and I think part of what I want to add to that is, is the fact that maybe part of, of the strategy is, is, first of all, to think. Let us, you know, let the political think and then strategize for years ahead, mm. you know, because it's in, it's in that strategy, it's in the thinking and coming up with a strategy. When you come up with a strategy and you say, okay, maybe not... No, maybe not in the next four years, but in the next yeah. eight years, yes. there must be somebody. And that work has got to start now. It's possible that it has started, but some, I, I don't think there are enough people who can amplify the strategy have been involved. Mm. Yes. Because, I mean, even if you can even get a governor, at least even governor. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, I was that's, and, that's, and, and not and tokenism. And it's not so impossible. Because I find that irritating as well. A couple of well. governors, actually. You know, tokenism, yeah, self, yeah. bringing somebody that you know will probably not deliver mm -hmm. just so that you can bring that person yes. down. down. Somebody that is, that is capable. Because we and do have so them. Many. Yes, we yes. do we have, have them. them. Yeah. We do have so them. why are they no. not being given the chance to, to do what they can do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but do you also think because, I mean, you know, to run a, a politics in Nigeria after today, you need a lot of dough. You need money. You know, do you think that maybe some of the women is their inability to raise the kind of monies required. That is what has not made them be able to make the impact, the desired impact. Okay. Now, if you can get people around you. Well, actually, if you look at FRK, she didn't use money to gather the It was the people. That's it, was it was the people. people. Because, the oh, people. and how did they do it? This person that needs Gary gives, yes, you, you know, yes. it was, so yes. That was, I like that. Yes, yes. You, you know, it, and, and, and I, I also believe that it's a case of, Money should not be the issue. Money is important, yes. But if you have enough people rallying around you, what did Barack Yeah, but in Nigeria after the money is very important. No, what I'm saying is that was not money very important for Barack Obama. Was it not the one? No, you can't really compare no, America to Nigeria no. in well, terms of no, no, politicking. What, no, no, what I'm saying is that the, it was the one dollar, the two dollars. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes. it. Okay, don't, you're saying don't that as in, crowdfund. Yes, crowdfund. Don't wait for the, you, you know, and, and that's part of what I'm saying is the strategy. What is your the strategy? Your what have we planned? Mm -hmm. And then let's start the fundraising. 
there are enough people who can get the billions that, that that's needed. I hope so because I remember when um, um, OBS Equality was running. I remember I, I believed in her. I, mm -hmm. I I knew she could deliver if given the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. I didn't think that she would go far, and she mm -hmm. didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's because at the end of the day, like you said, maybe she didn't have she came in late. Well, mm. Even if she had come in early, mm -hmm. do you really think that would have made any any difference? I I, I honestly think it was um, it was it was a a, a strategy to just understand mm -hmm. the political terrain, you know. Because if it had been a a, a, a real run for the presidency, I I honestly believe that what uh, obviously because she said set her mind to do, she will achieve it. I hope so. I yeah. hope so yeah. because yeah. I think for any of our we're, women, we're overripe yes. for that. Yes, yes, we're overripe because it's strength of a woman. Mm. It's not just in the house; it's mm. also anywhere she puts her mind to. We are a very strong force. Yes, we to are. reckon with, and I think yeah. we should be given the same opportunities to. Uh, to, to, to be successful and to progress. Mm, you mm. Know? I, I also think that the African psyche, and I'm sorry to say that, is still a bit chauvinistic. I think women are still being undermined and not given their due credibility or position, due, their due place in society. You get it even when you talk to staff. You can still see this underlining, maybe because I'm not married, mm -hmm. and I know what I go through with staff sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, because, oh, now, nah, madam, you know, you, you will get away with certain things because I'm a woman, you know, mm -hmm. you, they, they might cheat you when it comes to petrol, to, to generate, oh, no, seriously. But they cheat the guy as well. No, they, but it's easier for them to cheat the woman, uh. do you understand? So I think that psyche, that kind of attitude has to change where you believe a woman's place is in the bedroom or a woman's in place the kitchen. is in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. We still have quite a long way to go concerning that. But I'm glad that the children of today's generation, anyway, are, they're more liberal-minded. Mm -hmm. liberal -minded. What do you think, Kendi? I think they are. But I still feel that every, every single uh, one of the new generation still needs to be uh, directed or realigned somehow and the role would obviously also be some of the assignment that our, le our uh, spiritual leaders have mm. to play whether in islam or in christianity or in positions or whether you're a motivational speaker in whatever office you occupy as a leader mm -hmm. you need to help the women the girls you know mm. there are things you can do even in little counseling rooms in the churches all these counseling offices for marital marriage counseling there are so many things that the, the uh, spiritual leaders can also help to do, and other leaders in other positions. I also think the issue of um, rape, for instance, oh, wow. is one area too that has to be addressed more, 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 more um, strong, st strongly. strongly. Mm. Because there's, there's still people who get away with this. You know, as much as we say women are advancing, women are making waves, women are moving from strength to strength, then you see something that will set us back. And you say to yourself, I mean, in this day and age, I know now that the, 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 the charges for rape till today, a lot of people who have done it have gotten away with it. So that's another thing that the society too also has to look into to ensure that every woman feels safe no matter what age or what place she's at. What's your take? Um, my, my take is that this is a place where people in our industry, you know, um, in media, in performance, in... You know, this is where we can help because mm -hmm. we have a way of subliminally affecting the society. Exactly. So there is a place for us now to start showing more role models, more mm -hmm. women in positions of power, more, more women who will take, especially when they have been raped or they have been abused, mm -hmm. will go to, to, to the police, will go to, you know, there should be more of that because there is a register. There is a register that we have in Nigeria. It was launched sex by offenders. you for sex offenders. Yes, so mm -hmm. that it, oh yes, that way it was launched by the um, I think it was the UN Women, you know, uh, a, a while back, you know. So there is a register. So there, there are things that have been put in place, but unfortunately, our women don't come forward. Unfortunately, they feel that um, uh, they will be Stigma. stigmatized, and so. This is where we come in as amplifiers. Yes. We can, we, we can you know, uh, put forward more works that are um, more celebratory of women and of women winning. 
Do you also think, challenges, do you also yes. think that <laughs> when it comes to this, the um, seg not segments, when it comes to the department mm. dealing with rape charges and mm. what have you, mm. do you think it would be better if we have women in charge of those departments? They might that would be feel, good. Yes, because that I'm would thinking be good. that's also another <coughs> angle because mm. the men might think, oh, what, what did you wear? Yeah, what did yeah, you yeah, wear? Yeah, they are, and this sure is the domestic matter. Exactly. Oh, you, you'll be surprised that the women too also say things like that. So, you, well, you, but you I look think at the way I, she was dressed. Look at the well, but I think women will support more because I remember there was an incident of a girl in secondary school or not in university who got raped. She was bold enough to come out and talk about her situation. And of course, the, the university it worked against her. Mm. She wow. was ostracized. Her father was even threatening to kill the boys that raped her. And they had said that, that they would arrest him if he if ever did anything to harm the boys. The but boys. it was them against her. So at the end of it, and you hear of many, many instances mm. like this happening. Mm. You'd be amazed how many women still get raped in today's time mm. that are not bold enough to come forward. Mm. So I think personally that when it comes to all police stations, mm. there should be a section, you know, built just to deal to with do rape that. issues and predominantly run by women. Amen. I think that would make more, more. But what, 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 what do you think? Well, f first, to quickly uh, go back to what she had said, I, I think that. In our own field, film producers such mm. as Bolanle Austin mm. Peters, yes. Yes. having produced this from Lyra mm. Sonkuti, mm. are doing things mm. to amplify the voices of women. Mm. They are they are looking for ways, stories that would entertain, yes. but at, at the same time teach. Mm. teach. So yes. I wanted to drop that in there. Mm. And apart from her, there are a lot of other films that I've seen mm. that actually show women coming forward, being strong about things. Yeah, that's mm. very important. Mm. Yes. Mm. Then about the uh, one of the having a unit in police stations to maybe address rape separately yes. mm. i will encourage the ngos that work mm. because i learned sometime there was an incident that happened with a little child mm. there was a child labor situation in my neighborhood mm. and i reported mm. and i had to move away from that place shortly after that why time. because the laborers these are people who have nothing to lose why what happened mm. what was the case oh he's about nine years old eight nine years old the kind of work they make him do mm. oh, was okay. very bad child then when they leave Somebody was always torturing or beating or maybe molesting that child sexually oh. because they would sleep in the uncompleted building and then yeah. resume work in the morning yes, again. Yeah. They must have picked up that child from only God knows what country. Oh. Maybe Benin Republic, I don't know, or maybe from here. Oh. Little boy. So I, I made sure I entered oh, they get that place. Too, actually. Little yeah. boys get abused. Yes, 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 he's a boy. I entered that place. When I saw him, you didn't need to ask if he was being abused. He had cuts and scars. Oh, oh my God. He was too young for the big bowl he carried. Mm. So I said, mm. no. Even though the supervisor of that site is a neighbor. Mm. I, unfortunately, I couldn't, I had to say something. Mm. So in the course of that, I now discovered that they attach, NGOs try to work closely with police stations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they get successful and their work is easy, mm -hmm. but sometimes their work may not be that easy. Mm -hmm. You know how sometimes yeah, some of these things may and go. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, so I'd encourage the NGOs who work with sexual related offenses and sexual uh, these issues mm -hmm. to maybe try to get some kind of um, something written into law mm -hmm. that can help. They would be a more formidable force mm -hmm. to push for things like that. Mm -hmm. Rather than but just writing statements yes, every now and then, then can they uh -huh. ask for a unit? It will be easier that way and than think, individuals to just walk yes, in and yes. go to a unit. And, and I think an, a constant educate, uh, educating mm -hmm. of the police force yes. as well would help. Yes. Constant. It can't be, oh, you've Certainly. done it, yes, you've done it this time and then, you know, it needs to be a constant thing. That's, 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 mm. that's, that's, that, it's interesting that you say that because um, as much as we have advanced in time and we are now in modern times and we have grown and we are now exposed and we are cosmopolitan, do you understand? There are still some deep-rooted traditional beliefs, traditional yes. beliefs yes. that we need to, we need to really, really <laughs> get deal of with and yes. deal with and yes. be able to handle um, 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 properly. Mm. Because I, when I look at the children of today's generation, I don't think they're as tolerant as our mothers were. Mm. And we are not as tolerant as our own mothers, mothers were. were yes. So hopefully we are moving in the right direction. In the yes. right direction when it comes to when it comes to things like that. Mm. Now, speaking of um, 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 your your fields in the yes. acting department and what have you, what else do you think that you can do again to celebrate women? Mm -mm. To you know, highlight their their their, their progresses and their their growth. Mm. What else do you think? Do you think more movies need to be done as, for the, for, the, for that? You know, I mean, the, um, that was what I I was kind of alluding to earlier because you are absolutely right. We have some people who are 
who are pushing the envelope in, mm. in that kind of storytelling. Bolani Austin Peters, um, Ifoma Fafuwa, um, uh, there's, there's, there's one that, um, you know, if I'm a far from what yes. hair word. Oh, hair word. Yes, 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 the, yes. The, the, the show, hair word. And, um, there, there's one, um, uh, Titi Lokwe Shonuga. You know, they, they are, they are writers, they are, they are filmmakers, they are theater makers who are pushing them, but they are not enough. Mm. That's that's my point. My point is that we do need to be more. There needs to be more storytellers yes. who are pushing because it is very. It, it is also very important for our development. Mm. You know, there was something that the late M K O Abiola always. You know, I'll never forget when he was campaigning. He used to say that, oh, you will be like a a nation clapping with one hand. Mm. You, you know, he, and you know he was good with all these proverbs, yes. and uh, especially in Yoruba. And you think, yeah, and you translate it in, in, in English, clapping with one hand. You, what, what can you hear? <laughs> Nothing. You, mm. you know, you can't clap. And that's the situation we're finding ourselves in, in our political space, you know, where we are refusing, we're, we're going backwards in the, the people in elected office, mm. You know, we are not giving our women the the, yes. the positions that they need to occupy, and so we, as um, chroniclers of society, and also shapers of and capable of shaping thought in society, we do need to tell those stories that are more of those stories that are affirmative mm. about women and women winning. You know, we're not we're not saying that they don't have their ups and downs. Otherwise, the story would be boring. I wanna, <laughs> but I wanna, <laughs> you know. But we, we must tell those stories. I wonder why well why possible. because politics, from what we're saying, politics is the only sector really that we are not really yeah making that we're imprint. regressing. We're regressing. Yes, yes. That's that, that is that is that mm. is really amazing because I just mm. think we have so many intelligent women, mm, so many yes. politically savvy women, women yes. and women naturally work twice as hard as men, men do. Yes. So I'm hoping at some now, point. Now, yeah, that may be interesting because like BAP has done with FRK, mm. maybe that's what we should do with these modern women. Yes. What are their stories? Yes. Yeah, what are the, yes. What that's are their true. stories? Like what are even the challenges? Yes. Yeah. So many. So what many are the women. challenges that Back they are facing? behind all the successes oh, yes. Yes. All that what we are, are seeing. What are the challenges they are facing? Yeah, but I, but know, I think with every so success, there's a backstory. There's a backstory. Yeah. There's a backstory, whether so you're we, male or female. female. So we, we, we need to amplify the stories of the women. And, you know, probably it is in helping to show the challenges okay. that we may find solutions. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Okay, indeed. Thank you so thank much, Joker, for thank this enthralling conversation. Thank you thank for Thank you so much us. for being with us on Perspective today. Mm -hmm. We hope that we'll be able to see you again soon. Thank so, you. Thank you so much for being with us on Perspective. Thank you. Anyway, we're heading for a short break, but stay with us because of what lie ahead, including a look back at the life and times of Iris Appel, the mercurial American businesswoman, interior designer, and fashion designer known for her flamboyant style, who recently died at the age of 102. Perspective will return in just a moment. Welcome back to Perspectives here on Arise News. The world is mourning the loss of Iris Appel, the lively and iconic American businesswoman, interior designer and fashion designer, known for her flamboyant style and oversized glasses. She was 102 years old. This next report seeks to do the impossible, encapsulate the essence of a unique woman who defined her own style and brought color to the gray world of fashion. Iris Appel, a textile expert, interior designer, and fashion celebrity known for her eccentric style has died. She was 102. Her death was confirmed by her commercial agent, Laurie Sell, who called Apple extraordinary. No cause of death was given. It was also announced on her verified Instagram page on Friday, which a day earlier had celebrated that leap year represented her 102nd and a half birthday. Born August 29, 1921, Apple was famous for her irreverent eye-catching outfit, mixing hot couture and oversized costume jewelry. A classic Apple look would, for instance, pair a feather boa with strands of chunky bead bangles and a jacket decorated with Native American beadwork. With her big, round, black-rimmed glasses, bright red lipstick and short white hair, she stood out at every fashion show she attended. 
From the way she expressed her fashion choices with such freedom and with no limitations whatsoever, in other words, on her own terms, Iris Apfel, for me, embodied the very essence of true style. As a designer and someone who is hugely inspired by color and by print, she was and still remains the ultimate mood board. She was iconic in every sense of the word and will be remembered as so, a true icon. May her soul rest in peace. She will never be forgotten. Her style was the subject of Miss Young Exhibit in the documentary film Iris, directed by Albert Mezels. I am not pretty, and I will never be pretty, but it doesn't matter, she once said. I have something much better. I have style. Apple enjoyed letting life fame on social media, amassing nearly 3 million followers on Instagram, where her profile declares, more is more and less is a ball. On TikTok, she drew 215,000 followers as she waxed wise on things fashion and style and promoted recent collaborations. She brought boldness to fashion. Uh, she also taught us not to be afraid to live in color. She brought technicolor in, she brought the freshness and creativeness back to self-expression. I'd say she had a personal style that transcended um, art, her love for art, and transcended texture. Life in itself is lived in texture, away from all the gray, the gray of our everyday lives. I think for fashion, she'll be missed. And she does embody, um, she's just also an embodiment of boldness. She tells you that that fierce boldness in which um, at age 80, she starts to recreate herself from being a textile designer, but being um, someone that personally expresses herself with her clothes that she wears and how she dresses. Um, she shows you that it's never too late to restart. It's never too late to express yourself. And life must be lived properly. She, she lived expressing without doubt of what her love was. And you must love it. You must love it. Being stylish and being fashionable are two entirely different things. She said in one TikTok video, you can easily buy your way into being fashionable Style, I think, is in your DNA. It implies originality and courage. As a fashion designer, she inspired me in so many ways. Particularly that stands out for me is her use of old colors. She wore them so well. I exaggerated sunglasses and neck pieces. She embodied fashion. And she wore it with such grace and poise and look so beautiful in them. In her own words, she said, I'm the world's oldest living teenager. I totally agree with that. I'm wearing this jacket and my sunglasses in tribute to her. And, um, you know, even at that age, she supported creative talents. She's gone, but never to be forgotten. May I gentle soul rest in perfect peace. She never retired, telling today, I think retiring at any age is a fate worse than death. Just because a number comes up doesn't mean you have to stop. Working alongside her was the honor of a lifetime. I will miss her daily calls, always greeted with the familiar question, what have you got for me today? Sel said in his statement. Testament to her insatiable desire to work. She was a visionary in every sense of the word. She saw the world through a unique lens, one adorned with giant distinctive spectacles that sat atop her nose. Apple was an expert on textiles and antique fabrics. She and her husband, Carl, owned a textile manufacturing company, Old World Weavers, and specialized in restoration work including projects at the White House under six different U.S. presidents. Apple's celebrity clients included S.T. Lauder and Greta Garbo. The three designers on that video were Odio Mimune, Lisa Folaoyo, and Larry Da Silva. Thank you, girls, for adding support to us. 
Women have been described as the incubators of humanity, the hands of compassion that nourish the world, the source and source of humanity. You can tell the condition of a nation by looking at the status of its women. Today's women no more feel that their career will be at the cost of neglecting the family and children. They are adorned with patience and perseverance, which has helped them attain the pinnacle of success. Women are more focused and they successfully multitask both home fronts and, 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 and at work. Empowering women who has also helped society grow and develop a faster pace. We are definitely redefining and redesigning the world. And always remember, life is a learning curve. That's all we have time for today. You've been watching Perspectives here on Arise News with me, Bruce Osime. Thank you for being with us. See you next week.